Hey, what's up party people? So I wanted to do another quick video. Hopefully it's a quick video. Today I wanted to kind of talk about income a little bit. Before we get into it, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe, hit that little gray button in the upper right hand corner of your screen. This way you'll be notified when I do more videos. So um, I had an exceptional week last week um, due to the number of hours that I worked um, and uh, due to the amount of money that I made. Now, I wanted to show you, and again, I, I know this is gonna be a glare, hopefully you'll be able to make it out, but I wanted to show you what my income on Uber was for last week. Um, as you can see the little chart, I worked Monday through Friday, you can see that Tuesday was an exceptional day, and if you can actually make it out, it looks like I made 400 and I wanna say 70, I'll tell you exactly in a second when I look at the screen again. Um, 14 trips and a little over 28 hours, okay? And that was $470 on Tuesday. So again, a, a little bit of a, a, a big day on Tuesday, um, but the average earnings usually for me Monday through Friday uh, for the hours that I work um, is usually around $700, uh, which is where I like to be. That's my happy number. Um, and I usually like to work somewhere around 25 hours. So I did work a little extra, but that was primarily on that Tuesday because uh, I got a really long trip. Um, now, different Uber tubers look at profitability differently, okay? Um, I know at least one major Uber tuber likes to look at his um, income versus um, his mileage. So if, you know, if he's up at a dollar fifty, and this is coming off the X platform, I think primarily. So, you know, if he's coming off of, um, looking at a dollar amount and dividing that by the number of miles that he put in, and he's getting an actual amount of money more than what Uber would be paying him. For example, uh, I think in a particular market, uh, let's say Uber's paying 65 cents per mile. But when he does the math, he gets, he calculates it at a dollar 60 per mile. And so he's looking at it, like, okay, well, I was efficient in my driving and the actual number of miles that I drove, and that's where my profit is. Okay. Um, I like to look at profit based on uh, hours because here in the New York City suburbs, unlike other parts of the country, we have a lot of dead miles that are built into most of our long trips. Um, and also in my case, especially on the higher tier platforms, there's a lot of dead time. So I could be online for eight hours, but I might only be working for, for six of them or some of that. A significant portion of that time is spent waiting for the next call uh, because we're not in as much demand on the higher tiers as we are on the X platform. So now, I did a little bit more of a breakdown from yesterday because yesterday I had a really good day too. $310.83. I think I was online for, uh, what is that? Seven hours, 51 minutes. And I did a total of four trips and I'm hoping you can see that with the glare, okay? Um, so let's look at that in a little bit more detail. Right, so four trips, seven hours, 51 minutes. Based on my calculations, um, and by the way, just take a step back. That came out to $41.38 per hour. That's good money. Definitely above the minimum wage. Now, according to my calculations, I only drove, I only worked five hours and 20 minutes of that time. The rest was downtime, right? And if I do the math then, $59.20 per hour. That is outstanding money. Now, I drove a total of 242 miles during the course of that. And when I did the math there, that came out to somewhere around $1.23 per mile. Again, a lot of Uber tubers don't talk about the, the tax end of this thing, right? So if we're just doing the mileage deductions, remember, the government is compensating you 58 cents per mile while Uber's paying you. So, so here where the, the base rate for X is 70 cents per minute, uh, per mile, I'm sorry. Um, you gotta tack on another 58 cents 
in your estimations um, in terms of what your profitability is and what you're actually making per mile. Now, we tend to negate that because it's not 70 cents plus the 58 cents that's being that you're able to cash out on any given day or at the end of the week or the following week rather but you have to factor that in because that goes against your bottom line and i think a lot of us do not look at this even in that basic sense as you're operating a business your your, your vehicle is simply a tool by which you utilize it to get paid now i hear a lot of times people complain passengers complain because a lot of times someone will accept the call they find out where they're going however they phone call them hey where you're going whatever which you're not supposed to do but the people do it and um uh they wind up canceling the call and a lot of times i hear that it's going to an airport or it's going into the city and you know it's kind of tricky because I know that the long trips register is 45 minutes or more. And there's some trips that go to the airport in which it comes in at 43 minutes, 44 minutes, especially in rush hour, and it won't register as a long trip. I know some people have time constraints. They've got other things to do, and so they'd rather not do a long trip, especially you know at a time before they have to go to work maybe in the morning. I understand that. But I also think that there are a lot of people that do this because they're not factoring the factoring in the fact that they're being compensated the way they are, especially on the back end from the government. So even though we drop off, we're forced to drop off at any of the airports primarily, and we have to come back empty, right? If we take a trip into Manhattan, we have to come back empty. But you're still getting paid 58 cents per mile in terms of your deductions. If you made $30,000 for the year for Uber income, and I'm just throwing ballpark numbers out, $30,000 for the year, and now here comes your taxes and you owe $4,000 in taxes. If you're able to now apply that mileage as a deduction and offset $4,000 in tax liability, then you 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 were able to keep the four thousand dollars that you made in your pocket. You didn't have to pay it out as an expense, which you probably already pay, you're probably already spent that money anyway. Because most of us don't have the discipline to put money aside on a week to week basis so that we can deal with our taxes when that time comes. Um, so I urge, especially our New York City suburbs drivers to, to really keep that in mind in terms of what you do and to also continue to take the approach of you operating a business and assessing every aspect of what makes up your bottom line and what makes you profitable or not profitable in doing this. I think there's a large number of people who have started this, did it for a while and quit because they felt they weren't making any money and maybe they weren't. But again, speaking as someone who operated a, a premium and premium SUV qualified vehicle on the X platform at 70 cents per mile for the first four or five months that I was doing this, um, I made excellent money for the time that I worked, for the hours that I worked, and for um, the days of the week that I worked, no Friday nights, no Saturday nights, um, it just worked out really well. And I think it's your approach and how you do things. Yes, you have to be strategic. Yes, you have to position yourself in the right spots. Yes, you have to have a market that has the demand. Um, but you also have to operate in a business sense as well. So that being said, until the next uh, video, stay frosty, my friends. See ya.